Hello there. Welcome to ANA. Today I have for you a full review of Dries Van Norton from Frederick Mall. Uh, so as usual, I'm going to give you some information on the background, the way the scent wears, and ultimately what I think about it. So let's begin, shall we? Frederick Mall is overall my favorite brand when it comes to fragrances. I really like the way he works with perfumers, the engineering approach to perfume. He starts on the current state of fragrances, the French style, and then the classic inspirations, no marketing, marketing and things like that. I like it all. So coming to this fragrance, Dries Van Norton by Frederick Moll or Edition Parfum Frederick Moll was a 2013 release. Uh, it was composed by Bruno Ivanovic, who was uh, someone I didn't know much about. He's only known for doing Abercrombie and Fitch Fairs before that. Uh, this is his first fragrance for the house of Frederick Moll. This was supposed to start a new collection where uh, Moll would create olfactory portraits of people who inspire him. Let's have a quick look at the presentation, which is a bit different than the normal uh, Frederick Mall presentation. It comes in this red box and the black label bottles. Whereas here, you can see that it's not the same. Here it comes in this red sleeve, but with a cotton lining that's uh, obviously in the orangish red color, which Reese wanted to maintain uh, for the sake of uh, mall then you can see the label in the front and the side which is obviously a throwback to the labels that uh, Dries puts on his clothes the same label is present here as well with the the black cap the box is the same as you can see the only difference is that you get a card with this one with the notes so that's really the unique aspect of this presentation you also have the information about the fragrance just behind the sleeve as usual. So that's really nice. So let's deep dive a bit into how this fragrance came about. Firstly, the name of the fragrance, obviously, that's Dries Van Norton. Dries is a Belgian fashion designer from Antwerp. Uh, Van Norton's collections uh, use fabrics such as velvet, satin, with very distinct striking patterns and designs uh, which are often inspired by eastern culture um, he usually uses a dynamic blend of contrasting prints textures layering different materials and strong colors which, which he is really known for professionally he is apparently a perfectionist he also does not do a lot of marketing or bespoke stuff just like uh, frederick Mott. he also lives in a very laid back home, a very simple life kind of, uh, surrounded by gardens and so on. Secondly, from the side of uh, Frederick Mall, his brand celebrated a decade in 2010. He saw great success with the likes of Portrait of a Lady, which released ju just that year. So he had been working exclusively with perfumers till that point. He had refused making bespoke fragrances as well to this point and he felt that it's time to bring more inspiring people on his perfume journey uh, he admires van norton's work very much as a person uh, and they are also friends so his perfumes were also sold at uh, van norton's boutique in the starting days of the brand so it was a very natural choice for uh, frederick to work with dries so ultimately, Dries accepted Frederick Moll's proposal, after which they spent some time together at his home and garden uh, to discuss further on the fragrance. After which, Frederick seeked out to five of his perfumers, or authors as he would like to call them. The initial trials were A Sheep by uh, Maurice Roussel, an Aldehydic Floral by Dominique Opion, then an Oriental sandalwood and vanilla by Bruno Ivanovic and some other green floral uh, fragrance and then a spicy carnation fragrance as well. 
Ropions and Ioannovic's trials were uh, selected initially. Then Dries and Moll ultimately chose to go with the one uh, proposal by Ioannovic and let go of the aldehydic floral by Dominic Ropion, which would later be adapted and released as superstitious for Albert Albers uh, for the same collection. Then Ries and Mal uh, worked on it uh, in Paris, New York, and Antwerp. After hundreds of trials, Ries van Norton was released in 2013. So how does this wear? This opens with a sharp, crisp citrus note uh, with bergamot and lemon, which lasts for a very short time, I would say, maybe two minutes or so. And right after that, you get this sweet, pulpy, almost fruity compote kind of a vibe from the combination of uh, Peru balsam, vanilla, tonka and the sacrosol. Sacrosol is a chemical compound which gives woods and fragrances in general that rich, creamy, lactonic, pastry-like quality and they choose to use it here. This pulpy, chunky, little medicinal sweet doughy kind of texture lasts for about 15 to 20 minutes with this you also get a mix of spices so saffron nutmeg and clove uh, which are kind of sprinkled in there they don't really overtake the composition which i think is done very nicely here breeze's clothes use a lot of contrasting colors you know silk embroidery etc. So he takes inspiration from paintings, sculptures, Indian motives. They are also a little bit psychedelic and very eclectic. But if you have seen him uh, on videos, he himself dresses in a very simple um, color pattern, solid colors, uh, mostly black I would say. So the fragrance also looks simple uh, with this mono color kind of. But all these notes add a lot of colors and textures to the way it smells actually. So you see that there was actually some thought put in during the creation of the fragrance to suit Van Norton's image. So I really find that very interesting in fact. As you enter the mid, the Egyptian Jasmine joins the party. It's a very soft, clean, buttery Jasmine really to support the sandalwood not really overtly floral or indolic here the peru balsam is also very present which gives it that ambery thick balmy resinous and medicinal touches the fragrance overall itself is quite sweet at this point it's kind of lactonic creamy buttery from the sacrosol vanilla and some uh, nuttiness from the tonka in there it does remind me a little bit of uh, samsara at this point from Guerlain. they also have some similar notes in fact uh, i'm sure it was clearly uh, clearly an inspiration for bruno on mall uh, to take uh, samsara as a reference i wouldn't be surprised now as these notes settle down a bit you get the central note of the fragrance, which is the sandalwood. And here it's just amazing. Bruno again was inspired by Indian motifs in Van Norton's work and wanted to use it here to give it that exotic worldly touch and link it to his Flemish ancestry as well. Here they used actual Mysore sandalwood oil, Santalum album from Australia though. Obviously, in India, it's very restricted due to overexploitation and it's uh, pretty rare and expensive to get uh, directly from Mysore. I think in isolation, sandalwood note in here is probably the best since Samsara, I would say. There has been a long time disappointment for me with the way that Western houses integrate sandalwood. They just bury the sandalwood under other notes or obviously the synthetic uh, javanol or even other sandalwoods uh, from different countries, uh, they just don't do it justice. It is a very respected, uh, precious, sacred ingredient. 
plus by itself has a very complex smell. So if treated with care, I think it can just take the fragrance to another level. Real Mysore sandalwood is soft, creamy, really rich and obviously woody, textured, lactonic, almost custardy uh, with aromatic touches and a hint of uh, green, sour and smoky quality to it. Uh, it's very soothing, calm, uh, warm as well, meditative smell and uh, that's how it's done here. Imagine by some magic or in an alternate dimension, you have a log of sandalwood that just turned to a soft, malleable pastry dough. That is how it is. Dry, chalky, soft, a bit yeasty, doughy, sprinkled with spices and sweetness from the vanilla and the sacrosol. That's how it comes across to me. It does have this uh, gourmand touch, I would say of that pastry dough like quality uh, speculoos cookies and milky and so on so yeah obviously some people have said that and i do definitely pick up that facet of this fragrance to really emphasize how distinct this one is let me show you some comparisons from other houses so santal royal and santal noir just two abrasive harsh and synthetic woods targeted to the Middle East, egoist from Chanel, too much spices, amber, Boadizil from Chanel as well, just not rich enough for me. You have Tamdao from Deep Teak and many other sandal or cologne style fragrances, sandalwoods uh, from Italy. Just too sharp, aromatic and cedary for my taste. You also have Santal Blush, um, Sacred Wood from Killian, the infamous Santal 33. All have that bit of green pickle kind of smell, probably from the New Caledonian Australian Sandalwood or just synthetics in general. Many others I have tried, uh, Piano Santal, uh, Santal du Pacifique, uh, Santal Complet, Santal Majuscule, Santal Masoya. None of them come close to uh, uh, this one in terms of capturing the qualities of real Mysore sandalwood. I would say the last one that did it very well was Samsara from Gerla as well. Which is why I think this is really special. Coming back to the development of the fragrance, as you enter the far dry down, the spices, the resins take steps back. The sandalwood is still center and front with hints of that sweetness. Uh, you then get some clean patchouli and musks which work with the sandalwood, gives some sensuality and warm touches, and really kind of fixes the scent to your skin and leaves a nice uh, scent bubble, I would say. There's also some violet wood that adds to the woody, soft, floral aspects of the scent and uh, some cashmere that adds to the warm, fuzzy, enveloping aspects of the scent. So at the last stages, it gets a little bit dusty, um, acquires some powdery touches that come in with the woodiness, supported by the clean musk and patchouli. This kind of dusty, powdery woodiness with hints of sweetness from the vanilla and sacrosol is what is left as the scent finishes on your skin. Now coming to the performance, the longevity is very good, uh, 9 to 10 hours I would say. Projection and sillage are more on the moderate side, uh, which honestly I prefer. In terms of occasions, day or night is fine. Uh, seasons are going to be for fall and winter because the scent is really warm and sweet. I don't think it will work that well in the summer or um, maybe colder springs, but not never summer. So when can you wear it? It does smell rich and sophisticated. So I would say at least with a smart casual outfit, you know, with a, with a light jacket or with a blazer or a winter coat or something like that, will work very well. You can uh, wear it to the office, it's safe. Um, or even just lounging at home and cozying up with your loved ones. It works really well at the time, especially during the holidays. It's totally unisex. But 25 plus, it does smell a bit mature and put together. 
uh, perfect with the beige palette of colors you know that cream colored uh, jackets or coats will work fantastically with this fragrance so ultimately what i think about this one i really love it i think it smells fantastic unique has a personality to it it's very comforting sophisticated and uh, very respectable take on sandalwood with a nod uh, to my home as well in india it really reminds me of someone astute wise you know kind of a, an urban person uh, with authority you know um, on a on a fall morning he had some he or she had some business meetings then joins his partner in the afternoon uh, let's say to visit art museums gardens uh, do some shopping walking around and fooling around in a historic european city uh, tasting some pastries at a cafe having some good laughs on the way and cozying up with eggnog or chai at his or her home at the night it really is a slice of life kind of fragrance and captures kind of the world and character of an individual rather than a single setting i would say Uh, definitely one of my favorite fragrances not only from the house of frederick mall but just in general it is blended to perfection especially with the sweet sandalwood and uh, gourmand kind of facets doesn't smell very juvenile or something very good tight transitions uh, very good performance of course and uh, personally i see a lot of myself in this fragrance or at least what i aspire to be uh could easily be my personal signature scent if i have to be honest with you now i call this fragrance as a lost charm in this video because of three reasons the first obvious reason as some of you may know already is that this has been discontinued after 10 years it is the first frederick mall to be discontinued it's getting really hard to find prices have skyrocketed so that's really a, a very unfortunate thing i would say second due to the people involved in this fragrance dries had the opportunity to come up with a olfactory portrait for himself and he doesn't have it anymore he sold his brand uh, to puj hey no judgment who released a line of mediocre fragrances under his name bruno jovanovic lost his masterful composition his first for frederick mall that he got to do over the proposals of the likes of dominique hopion and maurice roussel i mean imagine how proud this guy must have been third is frederick mall himself you know a traditional french style house without a sandalwood fragrance uh, and a and a great a great fragrance in general uh, it's really unfortunate again i hope mall gets to bring it back in some form or shape or comes up with a new sandalwood fragrance for his house uh, and i hope to see something like this again in the future third and main reason why i call this as a lost charm is because we just don't have a lot of fragrances like this anymore you know that charming comforting feel good calming soothing smell i would say with some playfulness and at the same time unusual confident very robust and reassuring so it's really is a is a shame that we uh, we don't have this anymore nowadays you have you know either synthetic designers mostly or uh, very juvenile sweet gourmands or some fragrances that are just too dark and serious there's just nothing that captures this niche very specifically so i would say it's really a, a pity again but hey it is what it is i do appreciate that it was made and i will enjoy what i have left to the fullest i do have another 50 ml bottle that i use after that i just have this 100 ml and of course i do recommend checking it out if you are able to find it at least uh, sample it if you get the chance so there you go dries van norten by frederick mall hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and i will see you with another video take care ciao